Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'm going to preview the upcoming by-election in Wales to see if the Liberal Democrats can wrest some momentum back towards the Remain side and about the allying that they're doing to try and bring that about. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe for further content. So we don't quite know when we're going to get a full-blown general election, though the smart money seems to be on October at the moment. But we have the next best thing this week. The vacant seat of Brecon and Radnorshire in Wales is being decided in a by-election this Thursday, August the 1st. Just as an aside, August the 1st is an important date on a more annual basis because it's also Yorkshire Day when people up and down the country celebrate the glory that is God's county. No? No, I don't know. So let's take a look first of all of what happened to the results in 2017, which was the last general election. The Conservatives won with 48.6% of the vote, which was an increase on 2015, with the Liberal Democrats a distant second on 29.1% of the vote. Labour were even further behind with 17.7% of the vote. In fact, Labour have never shown any chance of having gained this seat, uh, something that's going to be important a little later. Now, the seat is currently vacant because the Conservative MP broke the law regarding expenses and the electorate were permitted to recall him on that basis, which, of course, they duly did. This time around, the Brexit party will also be getting involved, which means that they could easily split the right wing vote with the Tories and the Liberal Democrats could get back in for the first time since 2010. And although people can vote in Westminster elections for all sorts of reasons and, of course, have every right to do so, Brexit is still the hot topic on everyone's mind. So... How did this constituency vote to join the Brexit referendum? It was very slightly leave, but as narrow as you get. It was pretty much 50-50. It was even narrower than the national difference. This makes it less leave than Peterborough, which is the constituency that had a by-election recently as well. And truth be told, it's likely to have become much more Remain now, much like the rest of the country. So I wouldn't expect the Brexit party to put up as big a challenge as they did in Peterborough recently. But anything that they can take from the Tories is, of course, good news for someone like me. The by-election will also be an early test for Boris Johnson's new government. Jacob Rees-Mogg has already been down there to lend support to the Conservative candidate, who remains the same man that was recalled. Now, in order to maximise the chance of success, the Liberal Democrats, Plaid Cymru, who are the Welsh Nationalist Party, and the Green Party have formed a sort of Remain alliance. Plaid and the Greens have agreed not to field a candidate in this week's election in order to concentrate that Remain vote into one party. Now, ordinarily, I'd be disappointed that Labour are not doing the same. But to be fair, Jo Swinson, who is the new Liberal Democrat leader, has publicly said that she refuses to work with Jeremy Corbyn. Now, don't get me wrong, he doesn't exactly work with others either. But for an opposition leader to say that they point blank refuse to work with the official leader of the opposition in Parliament is, I think, gobsmackingly stupid. Sure, do it on a case by case basis to make sure you're not concerning your party supporters. But don't rule out things like that. But anyway, I doubt Corbyn would have stood down the Labour's candidate anyway. This means that it will still be a real contest. We basically need the Brexit party to take much more support from the Conservatives than Labour do from the Liberal Democrats. Now, if the Liberal Democrats can win the seat, it does shift that momentum back towards Remain in what was a very slight leave area and means that Boris Johnson's majority stays where it is with an extra committed Remain MP in the House of Commons. It will also be seen as an early failure on the part of Boris Johnson if his party loses what was a commanding majority during the last two elections. They, they will, of course, downplay it if that happens. Uh, just as if the Conservatives do win, as seems a little likely, all of a sudden the result will be a ringing endorsement of his government and the other side will downplay it as a safe Tory seat that was just recovered, another criminal Tory MP back in Parliament. But where we've got votes at the moment, sometimes swinging around one vote, it is key. This is absolutely crucial, this by-election. And because the Brexit stakes are so high, and it is the issue that many will be voting on, the Liberal Democrat leader, Jo Swinson, has said that her party will look at parts of the country during a general election and where it makes sense to support other Remain parties and not field a candidate of their own, then that's what they'll do. And she also noted that the Liberal Democrats have already done this in the past. During the last general election, they didn't field a candidate against the only Green MP currently, Caroline Lucas. Um, so they have got some form for doing this. Now, I've long said that the major reason we keep having Conservative government is not because the country at large is particularly right-wing, but because the left-wing vote is split too many ways. So before the Brexit part came along, the Conservatives 
basically no competition for those votes. A little nibble from the Lib Dems on their centre right flank um, and a brief assault from UKIP on their far right flank. But that's basically it. So if Remain parties can, when they know they have no chance of winning, agree to stand back and support the one who can, then all to the better. It evens up the playing field and it's only a shame it isn't a much larger alliance. But turning our attention to that by-election again. So let's have a think how it might go. Now, assuming that people vote roughly in line with current Welsh voting intentions, and don't take this as a professional prediction, by the way, it's just a very rough guess based on wholly unreasonable assumptions. But the candidates, first of all, so let's break it down to Brexit ones first. So you've got Chris Davis for the Conservatives. He was he was the MP and then he was recalled. He's standing again as the candidate. You've got Des Parkinson for the Brexit Party and you've got Liz Phillips for UKIP. Now, those are the Brexiteer voters, uh, vote, sorry. Um, together, they amassed 50% of the vote share in 2017. Now, if they split their votes according to the latest polls, that would put the Conservatives on 31.4% of the vote and the Brexit Party on 18.6% of the vote. UKIP would be wiped out, won't even get their deposit back. So now let's look at the other candidates. So we have Jane Dodds for the Liberal Democrats. There's Tom Davis for Labour, and you've got Lady Lily the Pink for the Monster Raving Looney Party. Though, I have to be honest, I don't actually know if she's for or against Brexit, so we'll not count her. Now, Labour and the Lib Dems together managed a combined share of 46.8% in 2017. So going by Welsh voting intention results with the polls, that would... That would likely mean the Lib Dems getting 24.5% and Labour getting 22.3%. Now that would mean the Conservatives would hold on to the seats with their 31.4% of the vote as opposed to the Lib Dems 24.5%. But that is of course just a guess based on the super limited information I have, which is not enough. Uh, there will be no stone left unturned during the campaign itself, I'm sure. And of course the voting intentions in that specific constituency do not necessarily reflect the general Welsh voting intentions either. Uh, and it depends, I suppose, on how many from both Remain and Leave voting public can be bothered to show up to put their cross in a box. You know, how many of each respective side sees it as that important. But with Labour still challenging the Lib Dems, I have to confess that the size of the Conservative majority may be too large to overcome. I'll be delighted to report how wrong I was next Friday if uh, Jane Dodds does win, however. But um, I'm a little bit dubious. But I hope you found the video interesting anyway. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click on the Patreon link for further details. And until next time, I'll see you later.